أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه السلام عليكم my dear friends I hope you well so what I I'd like to have another look at the salah because this is an issue that uh, is really fundamental to Muslims and Muslims uh, wherever they are find that their salah is kind of like one of the root core elements of their religion and so I'm going to take you another through another little bit of a of a, a, a tour with me through a very, very important and core text of Islam. And this particular text I want to go through with you that covers the Salat is a very, very, very elemental and um, core text when it comes to the practice of Salat. Now, first of all, let me remind you that whatever we do, whatever you practice, we are not supposed to be a people of mythology, a people of legend, a people of, uh, what's the word, uh, superstition. We are supposed to be as Muslimun, as Mu'minun, as the Quran instructs us, is to base all our practices on what can be proven, what can be established. Now there are two ways of establishing things in my approach and that is we can establish it as a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his authenticated and authorized text which is the Holy Quran or we can deduce it from any rational, logical, reasonable argument or study investigation whether it is empirical or otherwise and from which we can draw a position which is defensible in terms of logical, rational um, support. So those are the two proofs that I believe in. Right? So there are other commonly, there are other ways of establishing practice, like ma'roof, maslahatul am. That is the what people in general have come to agree on as a consensus and that would be something like protocols, driving on the left side of the road, having Eid or the moon sighting, whatever. I mean, those are all protocols that are sort of in the ambit of what is commonly agreed to by the people. Those are the types of proofs that we require, right? So, if we're talking about the Salah, then we also need proof. There's no getting away from proof. You cannot tell me that there is something that you have to do, but there's no proof. You just got to take my word for it. Now, yes, the Muslims, the Hadithists, the Salafists, whatever, they have produced proof. But I want to look at that proof that they've produced. Now, the proof that I'm going to look at is in the form of the four Madhahib. Right? So all the Madhahib, the four Madhahib that, is well, that are well known, have written on the Salah. But in more recent times, there's been a book published by more contemporary scholars because we need to always update our proofs. We need to have fresh proofs. We need to be, you know, have a strong link to even arguments in the past. So in more uh, recent times, there is a very prominent text which is uh, used by the Hadith um, followers or the traditionalists which is called al fiqhul islami wa adillatuhu now i'm going to show you this text quickly this is what this text looks like and there you can see there's the name al fiqhul islam wa adillatuhu now i'm using the maktaba shamila version right it just i have about 4000 books on here and it's just a much more convenient way to research uh, Islam and the legacy and the traditions, etc. So, what we have is here is Al Fiqh Islam wa Adillatu, which is a, a text, uh, a, a text that is uh, software based, but is actually a book. And I, I did own this book. I had the book on my bookshelf, but um, about eight years ago, ten years ago, I donated my entire library to almost entire library. I have a few books left to a um, institution, right? So I gave this set also away because I have it here. I don't have to travel so heavily. So what we have on the right-hand side here is the index, the index of the book of Fiqhul Islam, Wa Adilla Tuhu. Now let me share with you some, let me just give you an indication 
what is going on here. Right, so the proof really of Islam, of the Salah in particular, would be in this section, Arkanu Salat Aw Faraiduha, the requirements of Salah. So in other words, the required elements in the Salah. Right. Al-Ikhtalaf al-Fuqaha fi tasnif so so basically it, it 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 separates the requirements of the salah and it it actually will separate it into the malikiyah what the maliki mother people say waqala shafi'iyah and what the shafi'i people say and what the hanbali people say and then of course what the uh, um uh, Hana, if the Hanafi, uh, the, the, uh, the Ahnaf, the Hanafi people say. So let us look at Uqala uh, Malikiya. Let's just quickly look at what the Maliki say. Arkanu Salat Aina Ghayri Hanafiya. Qala Malikiya, what you have here is Qala Ma Kama Zakara Alamat Khalil Washar. Mat Waqa Kama Zuk. ذكر العلامة خليل وشرح متن متنه فرائد الصلاة أربعة عشرة فريدة فريدة وهي النية وتكبيرة الإحرام and so it goes on and it says the requirements of the salah are fourteen عشرة أربعة عشرة فريدة وهي النية so it is the نية to to, to, to explicitly state that you are going to perform the salah. Takbiratul ihram, to state, to, uh, to lift up the arms and to say Allahu Akbar, in other words, and to, and, and to place yourself in a state of, of, of holiness. Uh, and then it continues, wal qiyam. Right? So what happens is that this then, uh, the text goes into detail of the proof of the elements of the Salai in terms of the Hanafiya. But I want to point you to this particular point here. Because it continues and then it says, وَقَالَ Shafi'iya أَرْكَانُ Salat ثَلَّاثَةَ عَشَرَ So according to the Shafi'is, the requirements of the Salah is only 13. Right. And then وَقَالَ Hanabila And then the Hanbali says, أَرْكَانُ Salat أَرْبَعَةَ Ashara, the Hanabila or the, Ham, the Hanbalis, they say it is 14. Now the point I want to make with you here is the following. Arkanu Salat Mutafiq, Mutafaq Alayha. The requirements of Salah in which there is agreement between the various madhabs. يلاحظ أن الفقهاء اتفقوا على ستة فروض. So the fuqaha, you will notice that the fuqaha, those scholars, they only agreed on six ستة فروض أو أركان. Only six of the requirements have they all agreed on, and those six are mentioned in التحريم, which is the what qiyam of qirat it is the, the the standing it is the saying then it is uh, putting yourself in a state of holiness ruku sujud so the point i'm trying to make here with you my dear friends is that there are only six areas of agreement between these great and noble scholars as aspects of the Salah. In other words, when the Shafi'i says there are 13 aspects of the Salah, and uh, Hanbali says there are 14, and uh, Malikis, they say there are 14, they only ever agree on six. And so the question I want to leave with you is that there is no agreement amongst the top, top, top cream of the crop scholars on what the right of the Salah constitutes. Now let's quickly look at the proofs that they present then. So the first observation we uh, make when we look at the deep deep books of proof about the Salah is that 
There are there is very little agreement on what the core essential elements of the Salah comprise of. That's the first uh, thing we notice. And the second thing we notice is that there is no one single hadith or single sunnat that is in fact stipulating how to make Salah. Because if you look at all these chapters on Salah, it looks at arkans, which are basically the requirements of the Salah, and then it shows you about half of it they differ on. Then it will show you the prerequisites of Salah, and then it will come into um, the different aspects of the Salah, such as bowing, bending. But in no way, in no way here, and this is, you can exhaust this index because here the chapter on Salah actually ends. It ends here. Right? So you, you can read this entire chapter on Salah and nowhere in this core Muslim text that is about the proofs of this practice called Salah. Is there any, any detailed synopsis or layout of what the Salah comprise of. So in other words, in in the way that the Shafi'i or the Hanafi, or there is no Hadith that stipulates it in that exact format. So what happens is the Salah, the format that we use, is a construction. It is a construction by these scholars. It is, a, it is an attempt by these scholars to take a bunch of hadiths, each one speaking about something else, and some of these hadiths would not even speak about a particular salah. Some of these hadiths would say something very strange, like, look at this hadith here. I asked Aisha about the prayer of the Messenger, or my peace be, and, and she said the Messenger of Allah would observe prayer in a standing position as well as in a sitting position. And when he commenced to pray in a standing position, he bowed in this very position. And when he commenced to pray in a sitting position, he bowed in that very position. So this is a, a hadith. How does this square off? So what they've done is, Sahih Muslim, they've just allocated this prayer to, the, to, to how a traveler should pray. Although the word traveler comes up nowhere in here. And my friends, after scrutinizing these books, after going into the, the core sources of what the Muslims believe and how they practice the Salah, all I can say is that there is nothing sacred. There is nothing sacred about the format of the Salah. Salah itself is a sacred institution. It is one of the core practices in the life of a Muslim. It is repeated and emphasized over and over and over in the Holy Quran. It refers to a system of connectedness, a system of being connected to the law, to the code, to God, to humanity. It is a system of being part of the world. It is anti-isolationism. It is an it makes Islam an anti-hermetic religion. It makes Islam a religion that is socially present. The Muslim is a socially present person, not just socially present with his community, but spiritually present also. And so that is Salah. It is a person who is connected to the code, connected to the divine, connected to people. And yes, although we will have our regular formats or our regular sessions of illustrating our loyalty our dedication in the form of a physical devotory session, the format of that session is in no way hard-coded. And that is just a fact if you look at the core texts.